Tom Clark. Now, as the Jimmy Savile sex abuse scandal has unfolded, the BBC has been the focus of much attention. But serious questions remain about how the TV star was able to abuse patients at the hospitals he was connected with. Now, two former nurses at the High Security Psychiatric Hospital Broadmoor have spoken to Channel 4 News for the first time. Both told us that mental health professionals in the hospital knew that Savile was a paedophile. Porrick O'Brien has this exclusive report. At 10 a.m. every Monday for the last 60 years, the alarm is tested at Broadmoor. It's a reminder of the day John Straffan escaped in 1952. He walked into a nearby village and murdered the first child he met. It's a reminder of the type of patients that are here, a reminder of how specialised their treatment has to be. So here's a question. Why did no one sound the alarm in 1988, when someone decided it would be a good idea to put Jimmy Savile in charge? Channel 4 News has been speaking to former doctors, nurses and other staff that worked in Broadmoor at the time about Savile's role here. They paint an almost incredible picture of a man with lots of power and of a man with lots in common with the patients here. Richard Harrison's house backs on to the perimeter wall. He was a psychiatric nurse here for 30 years during Savile's tenure. So, what was the mental health professional's assessment of Jimmy Savile? Well, I'd long considered him, as many of my colleagues did, as a man with a severe personality disorder, with, with a liking for children. What was the talk among staff? He was regarded as a paedophile. By, and, by you, by the by, professional staff? And the paedophile patients, many of those knew that he was a paedophile. The giveaway then, paedophiles would gravitate towards Savile when he was in the hospital. Richard Harrison had a colleague, a staff nurse at the time, called Bob Allen. I'd say he was a psychopath. I would actually say he was. He was. Without a doubt, it's just the way his attitude was, his, his, his blasé attitude to everything. He didn't seem to care or worry about anything. A lot of our staff always said he should be behind the bars, and we used to laugh about it in those days. Then, one night while patrolling the perimeter fence, Bob Allen stopped laughing. Jimmy Savile's car pulled into Broadmoor and parked outside the terraced house that he'd been given by the hospital. I actually saw him step out and he stepped out with a young girl. Did she um, look like a child? Did she look like a... She was certainly over 13, I would have said, um, but she was, she, was, she was definitely not, not of an adult age. She, she was under 16, I would have said. That's the way I, that, that was the look that she had. Then Bob Allen noticed something else. The young girl had just taken part in a local village carnival. The girl had wore, was wearing a sash um, so she was obviously a girl off one of the floats that, from the carnival that day. I said hello, Jim, and, and, and there was a, just a nod at me. There was no mention back. I just walked on and I watched him go into the house. I saw the lights go on. I carried on walking and I just kept on looking. And I was thinking to myself at the time, you know, what's, what's going on here? Then Bob Allen saw the lights go off in the house. So you saw this, you, you felt that it was wrong. And what did you do about it? I went into our, our gated area where I saw my immediate superior then. And as far as I know, he reported it. And uh, the following day, I asked what was the outcome. And it was really just, well, nobody appears to be interested. Yeah. And what about other staff concerns? Why didn't you do anything about it, though? Why didn't you refer it up? What could you do? I mean, who would, who would take any notice? But here's the thing, Savile wasn't just a visitor here. Incredibly, for a time, he was in charge. In 1988, Health Minister Edwina Curry appointed Savile to head up a task force to run the place. At the time, Marjorie Wallace was working with some patients in the hospital. She remembers asking officials at the Department of Health, why? I was told, look, this is quite a coup. 
We're trying to change the culture here. Why do you think concerns that may have been raised fell on such deaf ears time and time again? I think it's because that would have spoiled what they hoped was happening, which was that things were opening up. Here's how Saville described his new job at the time. We are a great listening hospital. We listen to people. I listen to nurses. I listen to doctors. I listen to porters. I listen to drivers. I listen to everybody. We've turned into a great listening hospital. Broadmoor needed a shake-up at the time. It was in the throes of an industrial dispute, and officials thought Saville could fix it. He was given access to all areas. He had so much power, he could overrule senior nurses. One Christmas morning, Saville insisted that a group of highly medicated, volatile patients be given alcohol, against the wishes of the man in charge of the ward. He turned to me and said, uh, oh, he said, I'm in charge now, he said, I'll get them a drink. He left the ward and within 30 minutes he returned with some beers. But one of the staff noticed on the cans that they were expired beers. They were beers that had been, he'd found near the rubbish bin. It sounds completely bizarre. So you're saying that Jimmy Savile served up gone-off beer against the recommendations yes. of you yes. heading up that ward yes. on Christmas morning. Yes, and the consultant in charge of the unit at the time when he discovered what he'd done was furious about it. And there's more. In the 80s, Savile boasted about overseeing the discharge of a hundred patients. The Sun quotes a Department of Health spokesperson. He has a reputation for getting things done, and he is the man in charge. We've spoken to Edwina Corrie, the minister at the time who made his appointment. She wouldn't be interviewed, but sent us a statement, which included the following rather cryptic line about Savile. What he did have, as I know for certain, is information which gave him a hold over staff. That could explain why they said nothing, even with their knowledge or suspicion of his misbehaviour. As a result, ministers were never given the information when we could have barred him from the place. The Department of Health has now launched an inquiry into what happened at Broadmoor. What happened? Powerful people were taken in by celebrity. They put a paedophile in charge who went on to abuse patients and others. For the men and women at the department, it was blue skies thinking. For the people on the ground, it was something else. Can you remember how you and the rest of the staff reacted when Savile was appointed? They would say the lunatics have taken over the asylum. 